All right, so we need to proceed ahead. And a slight disclaimer, uh, what you're going to see in the next couple of slides might make you scratch your head, but I need to actually uh, discuss this in general representation, in the mathematical representation. But I'll make sure that I'll, in the end, I will, um, uh, in conclusion, let you know that what you are supposed to be doing. So first of all, we have been talking about representing numbers. So we have only been talking about three, four, 10, or whatever, all are positive numbers. How do we represent negative numbers? In computer, there's no negative sign. The numbers we have already talked about that the numbers can be represented with ones and zeros, which in turn are voltages. So how are we going to represent negative numbers? There are different ways, two different ways to represent negative numbers which you call complements of a number, okay? So in digital computers, complements are used to calculate or perform subtraction as well as representing sign of a number. It could be negative, it could be positive. So out of two, two, uh, two types of complements for each base R system, the first one is called radix complement or R's complement, okay? So generally R is referred to the base if you're talking about binary number representation, it would be called two's complement. If you're talking about decimal number representation, it would be called tens complement. If you're talking about octal number representation, it would be called eights complement. But these are the two which are most commonly used, two's complement and tens complement. So two's is something which computer understand, 10 is something which human understand, okay? So that's why we only focus on two's and tens complement. Another way of representing a number in negative is called diminished radix complement or r minus one's complement, okay? So r, if you're talking about binary, two minus one would be one's complement and uh, 10, which is decimal, 10 minus one is nine's complement. So you do not need to remember r minus one or what you need to remember either one's or two's complement or nine's or 10's complement, okay? So out of these two, this one is mainly used, radix complement, but we need to discuss diminished radix complement also because it will help us convert in a number into R's complement based on this calculation. Okay, so let's proceed ahead uh, with the discussion. If we have a number, let's say N, which is represented in base R, it could be binary, it could be decimal, it could be octal, hexadecimal, whatever, having N digits. Okay, a number can be can have n number of digits. Let's say 356. So when I'm saying 356 is a decimal because I'm reading it like 356. It contains three digits. So n value would be three. So the r minus one's complement would be a number must be subtracted with r to the power n minus one. So for decimal numbers, the r is 10 which is base 10. So r minus one would be nine. So what we call it ninth complement of a number n would be something like this. Okay, so 10 to the power n minus one minus n. Or 10 to the power n minus one, this factor is a number represented by n number of nines. Okay, so if I'm talking about 346, the 346 contains three digits, so n value is three. So we will be actually representing this number in n number of nines, three nines. Let's take an example here. If n equals four, let's say we have a number, um, 1100, 11, okay? So where n is four, you have four digits, okay? So according to this expression, 10 to the power n, we have 10,000, and if you subtract with minus one, we'll be ending up having four nines, okay? So in the end, what you need to remember is when you need to calculate nines complement, you have to subtract all the number digits with nines. So example, nines complement of five, four, six, seven, zero, zero. So here we have six digits. So we need to subtract all these digits from nine, okay? So this is the end um, thing that you need to remember. So all what I have discussed is the general representation of uh, nines complement. All what you need to remember is whenever you are asked 
to find out the nines complement of a number, all what you need to do is to subtract each digit from nine. Okay? So why we are doing this is again finding the negative equivalent of this number. Okay? It will make more sense when you will see the actual subtraction coming ahead in a couple of slides. Any question here? Yep. So what exactly is this used for? This is what I'm saying. It is it will be used for the subtraction. Okay? We do not have any way of representing negative sign. So rather than um, let's say if I want to perform seven minus six, so I cannot represent minus six. So I will take a complement, perform the complement of six, so that it can be represented with a number, and then I will add them together to perform the subtraction, actually. Okay? So this is what we call a nines complement, and whenever I'm saying nines complement or the tens complement, I'm talking about decimal values. Okay? Similarly, for binary numbers, the base R is two, so R minus one would be one. So one's complement of N would be two to the power n minus one and minus n. So generally, two to the power n is a number represented by one followed by all n zeros. How? You can see it here. So if we have a number, let's say n equals four, containing like four digits, okay? So two to the power four is equivalent to what? What is the two to the power four value? 16. 16, and 16 is represented in binary here. So here, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. 16 is set to 1, and all other bits are set to 0. That's why I emphasize on remembering the pattern, the binary uh, magnitude pattern rising from right to left. You can easily convert it. OK, so 2 to the power n minus 1 is a binary number represented by n number of 1s. So for example, n equals 4 here. So it will be what, 16 minus 1? which is 15, which is all ones. So what, what you need to remember is if you have to convert a binary number, sorry, to have to take one's complement of a binary number, what you need to do is, let's say this is a binary number here. What you need to do is to subtract all the digits from one, okay? I have already explained how it come down to all subtracting all the digits from one. So when you have to represent this number in a negative or negative of this number, you have to subtract all these digits from one. Or in other words, when you might have already noticed that subtracting all the digits from one means you are simply inverting all the bits. So this is the original number. You subtract one from uh, zero from one, it will remain one, okay? So uh, you are inverting all the digits. So zero, zero, zero are inverted to one. 1, 1 is inverted to 0, and this one is inverted to 1 and 0. So when you are, yep. Okay, so this might be a typo here. Otherwise, you have to actually subtract with uh, each digit with 1. I can probably do it right away. Thanks for pointing this out. OK. All right, so we have to subtract each digit one or simply invert all the bits in the original number to calculate one's complement of a number. So if you are given a task to calculate nine's complement, what you would do? Subtract each digit in a decimal number with from nine. If you are given a task to calculate one's complement, subtract each digit from one, OK? So this is what we call the diminished radix complement, or R minus one's complement method. Another method is called the two's complement, or tens complement, which is we are going to use throughout this course, and you will find it uh, practically being used. The reason why we do not use the other one, um, we'll get uh, to that point later. So first of all, the first one, uh, the diminished radix complement was developed, but later on, um, it was determined that um, there is a drawback in using that system. So scientists came up with a new idea of two's complement. This is what we are, are using and we are going to study next. Okay, so for n, digit number n in base r, the r's complement or the two's complement in binary or 10's complement in decimal 
it's calculated like this. So if number is not equal to zero, you calculate it with, you subtract the number from two to the power n in case of binary or 10 to the power n in case of decimal. Otherwise, the results remain zero. Since we know that r minus one's complement's definition is this, so r's complement definition would be, if you add simply this one, so it would be r minus one's complement plus one, okay? Which means that if you have to calculate two's complement or 10's complement, what you can do is you can calculate one's complement first, which is r minus one, one's complement, and simply add one to it to get to the two's complement, okay? Again, what we are discussing is representing a number in negative or representing a negative number in positive, okay? So let's say 10's complement of this number is r minus one's complement. How do you calculate r minus one's complement of this one? So what will be the output of this one? r minus one's complement output. r minus one means nine's complement. So we are talking about um, decimal. So r is 10, 10 minus one means nine's complement. How do you calculate nine's complement? I have just discussed this. Yep. Subtract every digit from nine. Yeah. yeah. So when you subtract every digit from nine, starting from right, what you will get is one, zero, six, seven, eight, and nine. So when you do this, one, zero, six, seven, eight, nine is the nine's complement of a number. And when we add one to this nine's complement, what we get is what we call the two's complement. Okay, so this is simply a two calculating a number uh, two's complement. So this nine eight seven six zero two is representing the negative value of this one zero one two three nine eight. Okay, again, it will make more sense when you will see arithmetic subtraction. Alternate approach to calculate tenths complement. Leave all least significant zeros unchanged. So when I say least significant zero, what do I mean? The least significant zero is the rightmost digit. Least significant digit is the rightmost digit. And the most significant digit is the leftmost digit, okay? So here, least significant digit is two, and right, um, most significant digit is nine. So what we need to do is leave all least significant zeros unchanged, subtract the first non-zero least significant digit from 10, and subtract the remaining digits from nine. Let's do this. So zero, one, two, three, nine, eight. This is the non-zero least significant digit. Subtract this one only from 10, so you get two, and subtract all the remaining from nine. Okay, so you will get 10's complement quickly. Okay, similarly, let's take another example with containing these significant zeros. So you leave all the least significant zeros unchanged the first non-zero uh, non digit, which is the least significant, must be subtracted from 10, so you get three, and the remaining digits must be subtracted from nine. So this is the way of calculating 10's complement. Okay? Any question? Um, trust me, you are going to do it a lot in this course, and probably your quiz uh, one, an assignment, uh, depends on this um, conversion also, okay? Same as the case with the two's complement. So we are coming to conclusion about the complements of a number. So in two's complement, leave all least significant zeros. And the first one change, maybe I should correct this. Leave all least significant zeros and the first one unchanged. Invert all other higher significant digits. So if you have to calculate two's complement, of this number, 0011011. You leave all the digits unchanged, all the first, um, I mean, the least significant zeros and the first one unchanged, and remaining, you can just flip the bits, okay? And you can verify this by, um, let me write a number first, 1101100. One, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero. Hold on for a while. 
So here is a number. So I just showed you one quick way of converting two's complement is leaving the first least significant zeros and the until the first one same and then inward oh sorry why didn't anyone say anything anyway so this is a number so the quick way of converting it into two's complement which means that we are we do not know currently whether this number is a positive number or negative number. We haven't reached to that far yet. But if you're given a binary number, you need to convert it to two's complement. So leave the least significant zeros until one, the first one you encounter unchanged, one, zero, zero. And the remaining digits should be inverted, zero, one, zero, zero. Okay, this is the quickest way of converting a binary number into two's complement. You can verify this. We have already studied this, that we can convert a number into its uh, complement, two's complement, by first converting it into one's complement. Now, how do we convert it into one's complement? Simply inverting all the bits. So when I invert all the bits, one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero. What do we do next? We add one. So when we add one, what will it do? Zero, and then one, 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 zero, one, one, and then zero, one, zero, zero, which is exactly similar to this. Okay? So rather than following a stepwise procedure, the quickest way of doing this is leave all the zeros and the first one um, unchanged and invert all the remaining digits all the remaining bits to convert a number into two's complement. Okay? Yep. I'm sorry to disturb this, but you said leave the least significant digits in the first one unchanged? Leave the first significant, first, uh, leave until the first one unchanged. If you have zeros, you can leave it uh, as it is until you encounter the first one from reading from right to left, okay? If it would be like this, one, zero, one, one, for example, it would be, you leave the first one as it is and invert all the remaining bits, okay? Any other question? <coughs>